Hello everyone and welcome to IBD Club. My name is Suha Bushama. I'm a second year GI fellow at Washington University in St. Louis and I'm excited to be talking to you about this article that's hot off the press published 10 days ago in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology by Bernstein, Sheehan, and colleagues from the University of Michigan and it's titled Tofacitinib for Biologic Experience Hospitalized Patients with Acute Severe Ulcerative Colitis, a Retrospective Case Control Study. In patients with ulcerative colitis, up to 25% will develop acute severe ulcerative colitis, and up to 25% of those patients will need colectomy at three months despite rescue therapy. And rescue therapy is typically infliximab or cyclosporin given in inpatient settings. Given these data, you can see that there still exists a significant rate of treatment failure leading to colectomy, which led researchers to investigate other medical treatment modalities. Tofacitinib is an oral genus kinase inhibitor approved by the FDA in 2018 for induction and maintenance in moderate to severe ulcerative colitis. It has several advantages. First is the rapid onset of action, as you can see peak plasma concentration at one hour, and with that rapid symptom improvement, specifically change in rectal bleeding by day three, and rapid clearance, as it has a very short half-life of approximately three hours, and it's completely washed out of the system in approximately 18 hours, which is particularly important if there is a need for urgent surgery. It's less prone to drug loss as associated with hypoalbuminemia and colonic protein loss compared to biologics. It's less expensive than anti-TNFs. It can be used with prior anti-TNF failure, and there's no risk of antibody formation with it as you see with anti-TNFs. And this brings us to the aim of this study, which is to determine the risk of colectomy, rate of complications, and rate of steroid dependence at 90 days in biologic experience patients hospitalized with acute severe ulcerative colitis initiated on tofacitinib compared to controls. This was a retrospective case control study of patients hospitalized with acute severe ulcerative colitis in a tertiary center between 2010 and 2020. The study group inclusion criteria included the diagnosis of acute severe ulcerative colitis, which was defined by the need for IV steroids and meeting either true love and which criteria or having laboratory endoscopic features of severe disease, age more than 18, biologic experience patients, and patients that received tofacitinib as an inpatient. And that was at a dose of 10 mg BID, which is the standard of care, or 10 mg TID for three days, then BID. And the reason that the 10 mg TID dose was chosen was based on the short half-life and due to the reported efficacy of 15 mg BID in a phase two trial. The study group exclusion criteria included post-colectomy patients and patients that received tofacitinib prior to the admission or during the same admission after infleximab. The control group inclusion criteria included the diagnosis of acute severe ulcerative colitis and age more than 18, and post-colectomy patients and patients that were included in the study group were excluded from the control group. Each case was matched with approximately three controls according to gender and date of admission, and that still account for variations in practice over time. The primary outcome was the risk of colectomy within 90 days of initial hospitalization. Secondary outcomes included the rate of complications, rate of implant readmissions, steroid dependence, and rate of post-surgical infections in patients who underwent colectomy at 90 days. 59 patients received inpatient tofacitinib for acute severe ulcerative colitis during the 10-year study period. Some patients had to be excluded for various reasons, as you can see, and some patients from the control group had to be excluded as well, which left the study group with 40 patients and the control group with 113 patients. As you can see, there aren't much differences in patient characteristics between both groups. Notable differences included 100% prior biologic use in patients that were treated with tofacitinib, which was a study inclusion criteria, versus 39% in controls, and longer duration of prior steroid use in the patients that were treated with tofacitinib. On this Kaplan Meier graph, you can see that the colectomy avoidance rate was significantly higher in patients that were treated with tofacitinib versus controls, as the colectomy rate within 90 days was 15% in the tofacitinib group versus 20% in the control group. And in subgroup analysis, you can see that tofacitinib at a dose of 10 mg TID appeared to be protective against colectomy, but not at the standard of care dose of 10 mg BID. There were no differences in secondary outcomes between both groups. However, you can see that of the patients that had a colectomy in the tofacitinib group, none of them had a post-surgical infection versus 39% of patients in the control group. And at 90 days, 50% of patients in the tofacitinib group were on steroids versus 31% in the control group. 
This is the largest and first case control study with tofacitinib abuse in acute severe ulcerative colitis, and it establishes a cost-effective, beneficial, and novel treatment approach for this patient population. However, it is a retrospective single center study with a small number of patients in the study group, therefore it's not powered for the safety of tofacitinib. Tofacitinib use in biologic experience hospitalized patients with acute severe ulcerative colitis at an off-label dose of 10 mg TID for three days followed by BID is associated with reduced risk of colectomy within 90 days compared to patients treated with standard of care medical therapy. However, prospective randomized control trials are needed to further delineate the optimal tilfacitinib dose, duration, and safety profile. Thank you for listening.